Okay, well, good morning, everybody. John Berquist here with Binary Office. Uh, appreciate you joining us. Uh, this is our webinar and live demonstration this morning on how we can help auto dealerships really slash back office costs. And this will be part one of a two-part series of uh, webinars. In part two, we'll cover uh, more of uh, the angle of scanning and storing uh, all accounting paperwork and deep jackets uh, and scanning and storing that paper electronically for uh, retrieval later, archival purposes, and uh, compliance. In this webinar this morning, we're going to focus on specifically the scanning and capturing piece as it relates to uh, accounting paperwork, especially invoices, and how that software can uh, automatically read particularly invoices in the uh, accounting back office and automatically read that data uh, so that accounting staff no longer have to manually enter that data into your various uh, dealership management systems. So this morning I have with me Mike Haggins, director at Ancora Software. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, John. Thanks for joining us. So we'll go ahead and kick off. Uh, and uh, again, our agenda for this morning will cover specifically how scanning paper invoices automates two dealership AP problems, specifically manually entering invoice data. And then we'll also show how once we do that, we can export to any dealership system. And we'll also uh, cover the second problem, which is manually routing those paper invoices if you have a, a, a approval process or system within the dealership or uh, among the dealership uh, locations. Once scanned, we can show you how to do that electronically. And then we'll have a live demonstration. We'll actually show you invoices being scanned and read for the very first time. Uh, and then we'll come back and have a recap uh, of uh, what we showed and we'll quickly cover the ROI of using this type of software and we'll have uh, one promotional offer for you. So that's our, our agenda. Quickly before we get into that, we took a poll during registration and interestingly we found that half of you said the manual data entry was actually the biggest problem and half of you said the routing was, was the biggest problem, so split 50-50. Fortunately, we can help with both of those. So the, the problems that we we're going to address with this software by scanning and automating this process will help eliminate all of these things you may be currently doing, which you see on the screen now, especially manually entering invoice data, manually sorting the invoices, making copies, maybe missing out on early pay discounts, maybe paying the same invoice more than once. Uh, keying the data manually into maybe more than one system, physically routing around the dealership offices uh, we hear is commonly a problem, uh, performing a two-way match if you have purchase orders to match the invoices to, filing and retrieving, losing invoices, all of these manual problems will go away. And again, this once we capture the invoices, we can get the data automatically over into uh, Reynolds, Reynolds ADP or, or any dealership management system. We really don't care which. So the secret to the, the kind of the key ingredient to paper automation is to scan immediately. And that means that as soon as the invoices or paper documentation comes into your department, you You've got to have an admin person, uh, whether it's a part-time person uh, or an admin person, just to scan it right away. So by, by doing that, <clears throat> to speed up dealership paperwork uh, is the end result. A couple of tips here. If you allow for any paper source, whether that's paper uh, via scanner, whether that's images, already on your computer or supporting documentation from a, a scanner multifunction device 
or even if they come in via email or a fax machine, the, the software that you consider should accept all of those possibilities. Very important. And this also can apply, the second tip there, to deal, deal jackets or deal folders. Uh, we can scan uh, and store those electronically also, and we'll be covering that in detail in our part two seminar, so stay tuned for that. So in for our part one, and during our, our invitation, we said that we'd cover how dealerships can really slash back office costs by scanning invoices. And so to summarize, here's the list of, uh, of things that we're going to cover today. And again, be sure to watch for part two, where we'll focus on more on getting rid of paper records like deal jackets, deal folders, invoices, uh, paper service tickets, et cetera, and maintaining compliance by storing those documents electronically. But in order to get to storing paper electronically, you first have to capture it, uh, which is why we're starting with the scanning or OCR step today. And uh, OCR is an acronym which stands for Optical Character Recognition, which just means scanning a piece of paper and reading the data off of it. So again, these are the points we're going to cover and the, the issues. We're going to show you how to reduce invoice processing costs by 50 to 80 percent, believe it or not, that's true. And we're going to focus on uh, that second point, eliminating the typing of invoice data today. So how do we do this? this, this this, by scanning up front, this sets off a, a cascade of other downstream benefits in your dealership, like being able to automate the rules of processing invoices, uh, lowering errors, uh, easily being able to search for things uh, once they're stored uh, for uh, easy access later. Audits and compliance becomes very easy. And we do this by extracting the header and footer and the line item data off your invoices automatically by using the newer OCR technology. Once scanned, we can enforce rules and things become easily trackable because we've, we've scanned them and everything is electronic. And you get instant access every step of the way. So all of these, all of these things add up to the first two points up at the top of the, the screen there. Uh, by eliminating manual data entry and making routing electronic if you want. We accomplish all of these things. So one tip I would have for you, if you're looking at scanning software, look for both of these features, both number one and two. Uh, a software should be able to eliminate the, the manual data entry by reading the data, and it should be able to route electronically. Another tip, look for, in the scanning side, and we'll show you this today, look for an automated setup feature uh, for your, all of your vendor invoices. Some products will force you to, to tediously set up a template to recognize the invoice. That can become fairly tedious for you. So reducing costs by, by 50 to 80 percent can, can seem pretty radical. But uh, by using capture software to scan, scan once and send the information twice, what I mean by that tip is this is kind of a neat feature. Once we scan and read things, you can scan, capture it once, and then send the data to your dealership management system, again, Reynolds or ADP or, or whatever system you have, and send the images and the indexes to your document storage uh, folder or system in one fell swoop. So it's kind of a two for one. And again, that helps us uh, attain that 50 to 80 percent savings. So that again, that's what we mean by scan once, but we can send it to two places at once. Send the data to your system and the images to another storage system. So uh, another bonus uh, suggestion I have for you. I would suggest automatically you can create a central repository for all of your AP transactions in a document imaging system. Again, you've got to capture it, scan it first, which is what we're going to show you today. But uh, it's another kind of a two-for-one bonus. So again, we, we reduce costs by 50 to 80 percent, uh, not only by scanning and reading automatically, but we free your staff 
in the accounting department from that kind of relentless questioning sometimes that goes on uh, from suppliers and staff, you know, did, is the invoice paid? Where is it? What's the status? And uh, if you, again, the tip being if you scan up front, you can have that early access and everybody can see it uh, not at the end of the cycle. So scan up front, not at the end when, when the invoice is done and paid. And the same thing for, for auditors. You can give direct access to, to auditors. Why would you want to do that? Well, once it's scanned and stored uh, by our capture software, you'll alleviate that whole burden of searching for files to give to an auditor. So uh, we'll cover this more in, in part two of the webinar and how to set up a, a guest auditor account, if you will, for that auditor to quickly find the documents and perform their audit without your accounting folks have to spend their time providing files to the auditor. And again, we eliminate all those uh, late fees. We allow you to capture early pay discounts. How do we do that? We streamline your, your payment cycle uh, by avoiding those late fees and allowing you to capture those early payment discounts. And we do that by automating your paper invoice rules and enforcing them electronically through the software, which we'll show you today. So uh, the tip there being, use the software if, if you can automate your rules and enforce those that enforcement frees up all of that time that your staff had been doing and now they can perform other more important things so with that uh, we're going to switch to a demonstration show we're going to have mike from ancora software uh, our favorite uh, accounts payable scanning software uh, show us one product and Cora Docs, which is a fantastic product specifically for scanning invoices. And uh, Mike, I am going to give controls over to you here. And we'll let you go ahead and take control to show us and Cora Docs. All right, John. I've got it. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we're going to go through sort of a three-part demonstration. Part one and part two, uh, we're going to go through what we call the capture side of the process. And part three, we'll go through uh, the invoice approval and routing process. The reason that I want to break, part, break the capture piece up into two parts is because I'm going to go through this process very quickly the first time and show you just exactly how it would look if you were in production running this system uh, and you were just an operator that needed to get your work done. And I'll show you how quickly the system can process uh, a few invoices that it has never seen before. The second time that we go through that, we'll use the same invoices for, for reasons that I'll explain. Uh, but we'll go through that a little more slowly and show you exactly what we're doing a little bit behind the covers. Okay. So John, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and launch in Coradox. We'll open this up. Uh, the system is going to require username and password. Uh, users can also be provided with particular privileges so that you can focus their efforts and not allow them into other areas of the system. Uh, I'm going to go in as an administrator so I will be able to see and do everything. Go ahead and log in here. The system is going to take me into wherever it was I left the system from previously. Now it just so happens that I left from the OCR environment. And all I'm going to do here in the OCR environment is at the moment I'm going to turn on that environment so that it is running in an automated fashion. So uh, this is our setup environment. One of the things you can see down here in the bottom left hand corner are all of these tabs. I mentioned earlier that users can be set up to do specific functions and see specific things. These tabs are part of that. So if you are, for instance, someone who is going to be doing nothing but preparing documents and scanning them into the system, you might see only the capture tab. That might be your whole environment. And that would be controlled by uh, whenever you are set up as a user in the system. Yeah, that's, Again, that's I'm a great an administrator. Feature. Yep. Again, we, I'm we an... like that feature, Mike. Uh, for, for our listeners, that's key if, if you've got a a part-timer or an admin person doing the scanning, right, Mike? Correct. 
Uh, and the same is true for whoever is going to do what we call verify or data verification. So this is post OCR processing and this will be presented to a user that I'll, and I'll show you what this looks like here momentarily. Uh, but this is the environment where an, where an operator has the opportunity to correct any issues uh, or, or mistakes that the system has made and the system will be able to take them directly to those issues. Okay. Um, as, again, because I'm in as an admin, I can go to the view menu and you can see all the tabs that we have available to us and you can see the ones that I have turned on at the moment. So that's controllable because I'm an admin, otherwise this would all be grayed out. Okay, so I mentioned earlier that the system, we're going to process a few invoices that the system has never seen. How do I know the system has never seen them? Well, if the system had seen them, it would be listed over here. It would be, they would have had templates created for them automatically. And I'm going to show you exactly how that works today. There is no setup for vendor invoices. The system does this entirely by itself uh, and uses input from the operator during the verify stage in order to perfect that template. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the Capture tab. And you can see at the Capture tab that I can control uh, scanners. Uh, any, twain, any, any scanner with a Twain driver will work here. Uh, you can see that I've got a number of them as, uh, associated with my uh, desktop here. I can also do what is called folder monitoring or directory monitoring, whereby you can scan and place your images into a network folder. And the system will monitor that folder for new work and when new work is discovered, it will bring that into the system automatically and process it through. So what we're going to do today, however, is we're going to use this files radio button. And what files is, is a manual import process that allows us to go out and get images that are already existing on, uh, on a network drive or a, or a local folder on your desktop. So let's go ahead and, and perform what we call add pages. And and that button will open up a directory. And from this directory, we're just going to pick a few of these. Um, three should be good for today. And we'll open those up. Now, in a manual import mode, what the system is going to let you do is present these images to you before it commits them to the system so that you as an operator can validate that these are, in fact, the invoices or the, or the images that you want. And these images we're using today, I sort of call middle of the bell curve sorts of images. They're not overly complicated. They're not overly simplistic. But they are, in fact, live invoices from real companies. Now, what we're going to capture from these invoices today is going to be both what we call header data or summary data, which is like invoice number and invoice date. And we're also going to capture the line item detail. Now, in this first process, in this first phase of this demo, I'm going to not only capture that data, but I'm going to validate that each line item balances to itself. In other words, I'm going to take the quantity times the unit price, and I'm going to make sure that that, meets, that, that that equals the line item total here. And then I'm going to add up all of the line item totals plus any tax or freight or whatever else might be there. And I'm going to make sure that that adds up to the invoice total. If any of that logic is violated, the system will not allow me to complete that invoice all the way through. So when we run these through... To, uh, sorry, Mike. This, this gets back to you guys where we start to enforce these, these rules and, and start to gain that, that 50 to 80 percent labor savings because uh, now the accounting staff's no longer doing that, right? Correct. Okay. So Let's get, these, let's get these three invoices into the system, and I'm going to queue those up. The system is going to say there's three pages in this job. I'm going to confirm that, and in the moment that I confirm this, the system is going to put this into the queue, and OCR is going to automatically pick it up and start working on it. In the meantime, I am going to select the Verify tab so that I become a Verify operator, and I'm going to wait for that work to catch up with me, and you'll see that it doesn't take very long. Once I get that work, I'm going to open those invoices up. I'm going to process them through all the way to completion. And then I'm going to stop. And that will, that will be the end of the phase one process. And then we're going to start answering questions about what happened behind the scenes. Everybody ready? Here we go. So we queue this up. We become a Verify operator. And then I will know that there is work for me to do when I see a little blue circle right here with a white exclamation point in the middle of it.
All right, so the system has completed those three invoices. Here we go in Verify. Well, watch closely, because this is only going to take a few seconds. And I am done. I saved my changes. Those invoices are complete. The, they, the logic says that they are fully balanced because they allowed me to complete them. And all, the, all of the data was captured successfully. The only thing I had to tell the system was where to find the vendor name. Why did I have awesome. to do that? <laughs> so you would have, uh, in, in real life, uh, our folks listening in the, at their dealerships would have read all that data off of those invoices. We would have, of course, uh, my folks here at, at Binary Office would have set it up to export to their accounting system. So they would have read it all, transferred the data, and have been done. And the images would be over in their document repository, correct? Fantastic. So everybody, that is the key to what we're talking about today and the reason you should be excited. And that's how we can claim the 50 to 80 percent uh, labor reduction and cost savings because, as you saw, we captured all those line items, all that detail in, you know, what, less than 60 seconds. So pretty amazing, and that's why we're so excited. Uh, we've been in business a long time, have been doing scanning software a long time, but uh, and Coradox is, is just amazing for, for that ability. So very cool. So let's keep going. All right, so I'm going to go back for a moment to the setup environment, and this is, the, this is part of the secret sauce that I want everybody to understand. If you recall when we were first in here, there was only this thing called the general template, and that really embodies all of the, the algorithms that we use behind the scenes in order to be able to process an invoice that the system has never seen before, like we just did. However, these three templates here these were automatically created by the system, one for each of those vendor invoice layouts. The system did this by itself. The only thing additional that, that was done is that when we took these invoices for the first time through the verify process, we did in fact tell the system where to locate this vendor name. When we saved that job, however, the system took that information and updated each of these templates so I don't have to tell it again where to locate vendor name. Now, usually there's a question that comes out that says, well, why would you have to tell it where the vendor name is? Because the vendor name is a special case of field. There are no hints as to where that might be. And it may very well be a situation where you have a vendor who is particularly proud of this nice graphic logo an OCR can't read that logo. Nobody's OCR can. But it gives the operator the opportunity to go locate anywhere on this invoice where the vendor name is actually spelled out. And so in this case, it was really easy to find. But in other cases, it may be buried down in the left-hand corner of, of the invoice in small print. It's never quite certain. And there's even a way to accommodate this if the vendor name is, in fact, not spelled out at all. Uh, an example of that might be a UPS invoice. UPS is particularly proud of that brown and white logo of theirs, and I've seen invoices where they don't really spell out their name. So these, these were created on the fly by the system using operator input uh, in just a regular process of, of completing an invoice. So now that we've got these, let's run this same process again on those same invoices and see what, what we get. So we used these three invoices to start with. We'll open those up. We've seen them before. We'll queue them up. So the system now has these invoices ready to work. OCR is going to pick them up. And we're going to wait for that next job to show up. We're looking for our little blue, little blue circle with a white exclamation point. And in real life, again, everybody, uh, you'd be using a scanner. But for today's purposes, since you you can't see a scanner working anyway. We're, we're just bringing the images in electronically. They've already been scanned. Right, OK, so now we've opened up these invoices again. Now, this time, you can see that the, that the system now knows where to go get the vendor name. All of the rest of the data on this invoice, the system found and read correctly on its own. 
without anybody else's intervention. Now, I can tab through these fields, and you can see where these, these pieces of data have come from. So there's the invoice number. There's the invoice date. And you can see that we have reformatted that date into a, into a consistent format for export to downstream systems. And there's my, my customer PO number. And there's my vendor terms. And you can notice here there's a drop down. This drop down is, a, is what we call a dictionary function. And there are a variety of ways uh, that we can use this well beyond just being a simple lookup. In this case, what we're doing is we're trying to validate that the terms that are on that invoice do in fact exist in the dictionary. And if they don't, uh, we have a couple of options. We can either add them to the dictionary if we provide that functionality, or we can force them to be one of the, the terms that are in the dictionary. In this case, net 30 is there, so we just move on. And then we move into line item detail. Now, again, if you recall, the way that we got through these invoices so quickly the very first time is that there is a, a special key. It's the F4 function key. And when an operator presses the F4 key, what the system is designed to do is to take that operator to the next point of required operator intervention. And that means that if there is any other issues with this invoice, and that could be uh, I'm missing data in a mandatory field, or uh, there's a business rule violation, or the math for a line item or, or the invoice does not work, what an OCR error, whatever the issue is, the system will take the operator to that point and stop. And it will not let the operator go beyond that point until that issue has been resolved. And if it's an unresolvable issue, then there is a process by which the operator can assign an exception condition to that invoice and still move forward. Okay? So if I hit uh, F4... The, Mike, I F would say the, the, the key, right, is the, about all that is the fact that we're, the system is automating the rules and now our, our folks out at the dealerships listening, their, their staff get to skip all of the, the stuff that is correct and they're only handling the exceptions. That's and that, correct. And that's, again, you guys, that's how we offer so much of the labor savings because your, your staff now are only handling the exceptions. That's the key. All right. Thanks. Go ahead, Mike. All right. So if I hit F4 now, knowing that there's nothing else wrong with the data on this invoice, what I expect to have happen is for us to move to the next invoice because there are no issues with this, with this invoice. So if I press F4 right now, like that, now that takes us to the next invoice. Now one thing to notice on this invoice, if we just tab across over here and go through this, we get to the vendor terms field and you'll notice that it's blank. I do not have a rule in place that says this is a mandatory field. If I did, the system would stop here and tell me that I have a problem. But because I don't have that rule set, the system will allow me to get past this without issue. However, I'm a savvy operator, and I know that all of my invoices are supposed to have vendor terms on them someplace. So as an operator, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hunt on this invoice. I'm just going to scroll down through it, and I'm going to look for a terms condition. And there at the very bottom of the image is, in fact, the terms condition. And the way that I'm going to capture this is I'm going to put my cursor over the top of it, and I'm going to click on it. Click. And so now I have terms. And I now know that they are also valid in the dictionary, so I am good to go. The system and will remember where these terms are, and I will not have to do this a second time. That's the so beauty of self-learning. And that dictionary, the purpose for that dictionary, uh, everybody, is to prevent uh, inaccurate or mistakes from, from getting into your system. So it, it allows us to to homogenize the data uh, once we, or before we export it to your accounting system so that it, it's all nice and homogenous and the same before it gets into your system. Right, right. It, lets us, it lets us provide a standardized output for terms. Right. All right. So again, there's nothing else wrong with the data on this invoice. So if I press F4, I expect to be taken to the next invoice like that. And if I press F4 again, there's nothing wrong with the data on that one, and we can move on. Before we do that, however, let's talk about what happens when something does go wrong. 
let's just say for the sake of argument that the system made a mistake here and it read that 7 as a 0 for some reason. Unlikely, but we'll use that anyway. So from the previous invoice, I enter this new invoice and I start at the vendor name. So I want to get through my work quickly, so I hit the F4 key and the system takes me to the next required point of operator intervention, which is this issue. And no matter what I do here, unless I fix this issue, I cannot move forward. I cannot go down here and click on any of these other fields. I simply can't do anything. I need to fix this problem. Now, this is a very simplistic problem, and all I really would have to do is to backspace and hit the 7 key and I could resolve this. But I want to use this opportunity to show you a tool that we developed for, for circumstances where it's not so simple. Maybe you've got an invoice that's got 25 line items on it and there's maybe two or three errors in there someplace. Okay? And what I do now is I will hit the F6 key, which invokes something that we call the invoice balance dialog. Let me make this a little bigger and, and show you what this looks like. Now, the thing to notice here, first and foremost, is this bright red highlighted field up here. What this indicates is the difference between the, the value that the OCR engine read for the invoice total amount versus the amount that was calculated for the invoice total by adding all the line items and freight and whatever together. So it says I'm missing seven cents. Now my job as an operator is to look and see if all, is, is all the data been read correctly. So if I want to validate the OCR amount here that was read by the OCR engine, I can just go down and I can look at it. It's highlighted right there. And so the system says, I got that right. So the only other place that I really need to look is the line items. And what is presented here is the line item total right next to the image area that that line item total is, is associated with. So the operator's job is to simply scroll down visually and look to see is there a difference between the, the value in the line item total as read by the OCR engine versus the one that's on the image. So in this case, we say, aha, here's my problem. And when I click on that field, not only does it highlight that field, but it brings up the other three fields that are associated with that line item. Okay. Now, I want to repair this. So all I, again, all I'm going to do is hit backspace 7. But what I want you to watch is what happens up here in this red highlighted difference field. Ready? Backspace 7. So on the fly, as an operator keys data, the system recalculates, and the moment that this difference field goes to zero and that red highlighting is removed, the operator knows they can stop. They have resolved all of the math issues that are, that are related to this invoice. Okay? And then all they have to do is to close this tool. The system has changed the item amount that was in error and has moved on to the end of the invoice waiting to move to the next invoice now. So again, if I hit F4, we can move on and save those changes. So that, from that point now, I, the, as John mentioned, export would be set up to automatically pick these, pick these resulting files up, send the data off to uh, the downstream uh, accounting systems, and send the images and associated index values off to a downstream document repository. Okay? All right. So I'm going to save the changes here. And what I'd like to do now is to move to a new environment and show you what invoice approval looks like. John, do you want to say anything, inject anything into there before we go there? Thanks, Mike. Uh, this, just that this is, again, kind of the, the second key in, in one of my tips if you're searching for scanning software and actually a, an advantage that Ancora Docs has, again, my company, Binary Office, offers a handful of, of various scanning and paper automation software products, and uh, and Coradox is special in that it it far outperforms other scanning uh, softwares in its ability to automatically identify the the invoices like we already showed you. But it also included in the price includes. Uh, some basic routing capabilities. So if, if you have an approval process for an invoice to go through or a, an invoice above a certain amount has to go to the GM for approval at the dealership, you can accommodate that with no extra software cost. 
So that it's a definite advantage to Encora Docs, and we, we like Encora for that. So that's all I would add. All right. So what I'm going to show now is a, uh, an environment where we're going to present uh, invoice approval. Obviously, in order to get invoices into an approval workflow process, you have to run them through the capture process first. And the way that this demo is set up is that we are going to, uh, we are going to present this as a, a, a PO match process at the summary level. In other words, we're only going to capture summary, summary level data this time around, but we're going to use that to go look up uh, the PO number and see if we can find a match to a PO. And if so, we're going to populate some data. So let's go ahead and bring some, some invoices in here. And I'm going to pull these from a, uh, a slightly different place. So these three should work for purposes of illustration today. And it's the same process. I'm manually importing these. So I'm going to go ahead and queue these up. OCR is going to go ahead and go, to, and, and go running on them because I've already got that set up. So we'll become a verify operator. And there's my indicator, so I'm ready to go. Now the first thing you'll notice in this screen is that we have split the screen vertically instead of horizontally. Uh, so I've got my image on the left-hand side and I've got my, uh, my data on the right-hand side. The other thing that you will notice here is there are three fields here at the bottom, order amount, max amount over PO, and send to department. These three fields are highlighted in a light blue color. What that indicates to the operator is that these are read-only fields. They cannot be entered into and they cannot be altered. Okay, Because these are going to be populated along with the vendor name, even though there's no CR result here. These three fields down here are going to be populated by the system based on a set of rules. And the rules are such. This is the PO number that the system read from this invoice. And you can see it right over here highlighted. The moment that I, as an operator, confirm that PO number just by hitting Enter or Tab, the system is then going to go off and look up that PO in a database behind the scenes, just like it would look up from a database or a file that you provide. If it finds a match, it's going to bring back the vendor name and populate that vendor name. It's going to populate the amount of that purchase order. And it's going to populate the max amount over PO field based on a rule that is specific to each vendor. In other words, this particular vendor has a maximum amount that their invoice may be over any PO amount. And then based on all of this logic working, that there is a PO, that they did find a match, that the, the max amount rule is not violated, based on all of that, we're going to determine what department to send it to for approval. If all of that logic is good and there are no violations, we are going to send it to the receiving department to confirm receipt of goods. If, all of that, if any of that logic fails, we're going to send it to the supervisory department for them to review and take action. And when all of those things are completed, we will send it to the payables department for them to actually make final determination and payment. And then there is also a workflow administration department that we'll show you here in just a moment when we get through capture. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and confirm that PO number by hitting Enter. And as soon as I do, the system comes back and says, OK, here's all the data, and I'm sending this to the supervisor. Why is it going to the supervisor? because the invoice amount is $50 more than the order amount, and the max amount rule is only $10. So there is a violation of the max amount rule. Pretty simple. And I'm done with this invoice. I just need to hit F4 and move on. So here's the next invoice. There's my PO number. Yep, got it right. Hit Enter. OK. Looks like all of this data is going to be OK, in spite of the fact that the invoice amount is different from the PO amount by $100. It is less than. So it does not violate the max amount rule, and thus this invoice is going to go to receiving. And last but not least, we'll hit F4. And here is an invoice that does not have a PO on it. And the system has tried to pick this up here um, because it couldn't find a PO number. And we're just going to take that out because I know that there is no PO number. You can go and look on the invoice. But we're going to go ahead and hit Enter now. The system can't do anything because it has no PO number to go look up. 
and I can't even populate the max amount rule because I don't know who the vendor is. But I can go over here and put my cursor on the vendor name and click on it, thus, and I can populate the vendor name and that will populate the max amount rule. But based on the fact that I don't have a PO, this one's going to the supervisor for resolution. So I hit F4 and now our capture process is complete. So now I'm going to go log in as the workflow administrator. And I'm going to take a look and see what work is outstanding in the system and who does it belong to. So let's talk a little bit about the display up here at the top. It's sort of a, a spreadsheet type of view and you can sort by columns. Uh, but let's talk about a, a number of the pieces here. First thing I can do is I can see what the status is. In this case, all three of these invoices that we just completed are pending action. Two of them are destined for the supervisor's queue. One of them is destined for the receiver's, so the receiving department's queue. And then here is all of the data that is associated with those invoices. Now the other column here called expiration date is a date that is set as a system configurable to allow you to make sure that you take action within a given time frame from receipt of that invoice. So if you pass the expiration date here, what you're going to do is you're going to see that invoice highlighted in red, where this legend is up here, as expired. And that indicates to you that you either may lose the ability to take advantage of uh, early pay discounts, or you may be pressing up against uh, a penalty date discount. And so you want to make sure that those things get taken care of as quickly as possible. All right, so as an administrator, I'm not actually going to do any work here. I just want to keep tabs on the people that are, that are working in my department. So I'm going to log out, and I'm going to log in as the supervisor now. Thank you. And so in my queue as a supervisor, I only have these two invoices. And this is the data that goes along with them. Now as a supervisor, I can look at this and go, hey, these guys at IMC World, I'm telling you, they never ever give us the right data. They don't give us a PO. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this button here and I'm going to send this in an email. And I'm going to say, you guys need to give me a PO number for this thing or I'm not going to pay you. So I can email, and, and, and here's the image of that invoice right inside the email. So I can email this right out of the system. Or I can print it and snail mail it down the hall or walk it down the hall. Um, but let's go ahead and open this one up. And so the very first thing that I see when I open this invoice is I see a message over here that says missing PO number. Where did that come from? That came from the underlying code that we tweak to accommodate each client's business requirements and rules. So that if an autom if a if a if a, a rule is automatically is violated in the capture process, we are going to be able to post a message over here that tells the user what the problem is so that they don't have to start from scratch and hunt around. Now in this case it's pretty clear I don't have a PO number. If I had one as a supervisor I could go ahead and enter that here and continue to complete this invoice. However, I am a supervisor and I'm going to say, you know what, I, I know these guys at IMC and they just do this to us all the time so I'm just not going to pay their invoice. So I can click on this do not pay button and that will be precisely what happens. It will go to payables with a recommendation not to pay. Now one thing to note here is that these buttons that are, that are up here at the top, these are task buttons and they are unique to the department that a user logs into. So these are the actions that a supervisor can take. Okay, we're going to say do not pay. We're going to open up this next one. And here's the amount, here's the message for this one that says check amounts deviation. That means that the invoice amount and the order amount are different and it violates the max amount rule. Now in this case, as a savvy supervisor, I happen to know that between the time that the PO was issued and the time that the invoice was received, this vendor issued a price increase and that price increase was approved by our management team. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a note and I'm going to say price increase approved OK to process. And I'm now going to send it to receiving to confirm receipt of these goods. Okay. 
The system is going to give me an automated message that reminds me that there is still a difference between these two amounts. I'm okay with that. And so now, as a supervisor, my work queue is empty. I'm all done. So I'm going to log out of this. I'm going to log back in now as receiving. And so here are the invoices that receiving has to deal with. One of these it came, came to them natively. The other one came from the supervisor. So let's open up the first one here. And the first thing that you'll notice is there is no message here. That is an indication that there is nothing wrong with the data in this invoice. And that receiving's job here is simply to go out and check to see that they actually got two of these widgets. So they go check their logs, or they check the system, or they check the doc, and they discover that they can only find one. So what they're going to do is they're going to enter a note into the system that says, only received one unit. And they're going to send it back to the supervisor for the supervisor to deal with. We'll open up the second one, and this is the one that came from the supervisor that said, hey, the price increase was approved, it's okay to process, and my job is receiving knowing that is to simply go and make sure that I got all of this stuff. So I go out and I check my doc and I say, yep, got, got one each of those things. So I go back and I say, all received. So my queue now is empty, but since I sent that thing back to the supervisor, I have to go log back in as the supervisor for a moment and deal with that invoice. So there's that invoice. I open that up. Receiving said they only received one unit, but I'm a savvy supervisor and I happen to know that that unit was, the previous, other unit was previously received on a prior shipment. So I say other unit previously received and it's okay to pay. And now I can just say okay to pay. Okay? All right. So now we're going to log off, and now we're going to log in as the payables group. And there's our three invoices. Notice this first one that did not have the PO number has been highlighted in orange as reject pending. This was based on the supervisor's uh, you know, recommendation of do not pay. So I open it up as the payables group. I look at it. I feel the same way about it that the supervisor did, and I'm just going to say, you know what, we're rejecting this invoice, we'll send it back to the, to, the, uh, to, the, to the vendor and tell them to try again. So I reject this one. Open up the next one. This is the one that had the invoice amount being greater than the order amount, but the supervisor says the price increase was approved, it's okay to process, it's gone through receivables in order to get to me, so I know that they, that they said it was okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pay this invoice. Done. I'm still going to get the reminder message, but I'm okay with that because of the supervisor's note. So say yes. And then the last invoice, the one that had uh, only received one unit from receivables, supervisor said it was received previously. It's okay to pay this one. So I'm going to go ahead and pay this invoice. And so my payables queue is now empty. And at the end of the day, I'm going to come back in as an administrator and look to see what the status of all my work is. And now I can see that two of those invoices was approved for payment <coughs> and one of them was rejected. So this is a, a, a fairly simplistic invoice approval process that can be tailored to uh, you know, any, pretty much any uh, departmental environment, uh, but it is not and never will be a substitute for a full-blown enterprise class uh, content management workflow engine. Um, and on that note, I will turn it back to you, sir. All right, fantastic. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, that uh, we'll we'll be covering more of the the uh, document management type of system in our part two webinar. But uh, as we said before, you've got you've got to capture this stuff uh, first and read it before you can uh, before you can store it and find it later. So I'm going to take back uh, controls, show my screen, and Mike, you let me know when you can you can see my screen again, I hope. I can. Okay. And we should be moving on to the slide that, that says what we've showed. Correct. Okay. All right, so everybody, we're going to recap uh, what we just covered and how you can 
start to gather your own ROI calculations. Uh, so I'll give you a few pointers on the next slide uh, on how to do that, and then we'll we'll wrap up. So uh, grab a pen if you haven't already, and we'll, we'll take some notes, and we'll recap this for you. So to summarize, what we've showed and what Mike demonstrated was, uh, again, how we can help you dealership uh, reduce the processing costs by 50 to 80 percent by eliminating all those manual steps, particularly eliminating the typing in of invoice data because the software reads it and we can transfer it automatically. We can scan uh, different invoices from different vendors. We showed that automatically. Even if never seen before, we showed that. Staff required, you can see how easy it is. All we really need is uh, is the accounting folks and some management uh, support. We don't really need a lot of technical IT staff, which is the beauty of, of uh, our software. And Binary Office is here to support you on the technical, uh, from a technical standpoint. So we don't really need a, a whole lot of technical help on your end, which is great. And we showed electronically routing invoices. So all that manual paper process in your dealership uh, between offices, maybe all of that stuff goes away. So here's a summary of, of how to calculate. Uh, this might help you calculating your own ROI. And then we have one more slide after this with uh, an offer, and then we're done. So uh, you might want to take, take some notes on these. So summary of, of ROI. What, what you basically need to do is add up the savings. Uh, take a look at, at your process uh, in your accounting department across all of your locations and add up the possible reduction in uh, processing costs, which would include the following categories. The data entry labor savings. So you, you might just take a, a, an estimate of the, the labor it takes to process an average invoice and add that up, multiply times the number of, uh, of invoices you process per month per location. Add up the routing labor savings. How much time is spent routing invoices around manually or having somebody approve it or step A, B, C? All of that goes away. And don't forget the rules of enforcement. We, we're going to automate all those, those error checking rules that Mike showed and use the, the data correction tool that uh, Ancora built into the, the software to catch and find those ad addition errors automatically. And then also, not only error reduction, but don't forget the late fees, early pays, all of that. Uh, and again, the reconciliation tool, all of those things are are caught automatically. Uh, so add up the number of times those happen in, in your dealership and uh, you can start to uh, get a feel for that number. Add a, you know, a, add a, a value to, to the number of hours or the number of late fees and early discounts you'll be able to capture once this stuff is automated. And a tip, don't overlook the, the, that pestering inquiry reduction because that is very real. Our, a lot of our customers say that this is a, a great thing that happens, that, that internal staff and vendors, uh, all, all of those pestering, you know, where's my invoice, what's the status, where is it, all of that stuff goes away when it, things have been scanned and automated. So the final uh, promotion that we'd like to offer you, if you mention this webinar, We'd like to offer you uh, uh, your own free, there's no, no questions asked, asked free, no hassle, prove it demo. And what I mean by that is, uh, oh, before I forget, uh, keep your, go back to the, the webinar page if you're, if you're watching the recording of this and look for part two. Uh, if you've got an email, watch for future emails on part two. Uh, but with that, to, to finish, Go back and uh, the final step I'd like to offer you, if you mention this webinar, will provide you a prove it demo where uh, we will take your invoices and we'll show the software scanning and reading 
your invoices right out of the box, just like Mike did today with the invoices that we showed. So if you go to my website, binaryoffice.com, we'll have a form there, uh, a link on the home page. You can click that and fill out the Prove It demo request, and we'll, we'll take your invoices and show the software uh, so that you can see it for yourself and, and add up your, your own savings. So with that, I know we, we've gone a little bit over, so I thank you for staying with us, everybody. I uh, don't think we have any questions today, so we will sign off. Uh, again, this is John Berquist with Binary Office, and uh, Mike Haggins, thank you so much for joining us again at Encora Software. My pleasure. All right. Thank you, everybody. And again, go back, request your Prove-It demo, and watch part two as well. We'll see you next time.